Welcome to the first in a series of tutorials on Inspiration 8. Inspiration is powerful concept mapping and outlining software that teachers and students can use for the generation, organization, and presentation of ideas. So let's get started. When we first open up Inspiration, we are presented with this dialog box here, and nine times out of ten, we will choose create a diagram. Now our diagram always starts with a main idea and we can change that to something that we want to discuss. In this case I'm going to just use Canada's food guide as an example. Now you will notice that it always defaults to this what I consider rather gag reflex producing green. So one of the first things we can do is change that default. So if we click on this and we come down, first of all we can change the shape by coming up here, choosing a rectangle instead of an ellipse. And we change color by these little lozenge shapes down at the bottom. The left hand color is the fill color and the right hand color is the outline color. So if I click on the fill color and just choose something like that. Always want to make sure that your fill color and your text color are high contrast. So if you have a dark text color, you're going to want a light fill color. So now we've changed the shape and the fill color. We're going to set that as a default by clicking on these two T's at the bottom. And You'll notice that when you hover over set default, it shows you the defaults we're going to be setting. Black text on and black outline on a yellow background. So we'll set that as a default. Our next job is going to be to generate some ideas. And the quickest way to do this is to do a bit of a brainstorm. If we make sure that our central idea bubble is selected, we can click on the rapid fire button. That brings up this little red lightning flash here. And then all we need to do is we could start to type in types of food. And all I'm doing is typing the name and pressing enter. So we're going to continue with this for a little bit. Now I'm just going to pause this because you've got the idea here. There's no sense watching me do this. So I'm going to pause while I complete some more. All right, we've fleshed out the concept map a little bit here now. As a teacher, you could do this with students, having this up on the projector, and then you could share this in a public place. So if you happen to work in Chinook School Division, what you could do is save this in the Handouts folder. So example, I'm going to go File, Save, and I'm going to drop this down and there's handouts and I would put it in my own folder and then students could have access to that. You'll notice that when you go to save a file the default file name is the main idea bubble. So we'll click on save. Now that's saved where students could get to it and they could perform some of the next actions that we're going to do with this file. I should point out also that the rapid fire button can be used as well in other areas other than the main idea. So I could click on meet and meet alternatives here, click rapid fire and then begin typing there. And then those ideas would be coming off there. So it's very quick to create new bubbles in that way. Now Another way, of course, is that you can create bubbles one at a time simply by doing something like this. So if I pick fruits and vegetables, for example, and I want a new bubble off of fruits and vegetables, I would come up here to the Create button. And this is actually eight buttons, not one. You'll notice that as I rotate around the outside here, each of these is a different link. So if I wanted my new bubble to be above the existing bubble, I would click here click in here and then 
like that. Click outside and the bubble is done. You'll notice here that it doesn't like my spelling of yogurt. That's why it's underlined in red. So I could right click on that and I could pick a spelling that I preferred. Lots of spellings for yogurt. Now, what happens if we lose a connector? Well, let's see what happens here. Or if we have an extra one. If we have an extra one, we can delete it simply by clicking on the connector and hitting the delete key. If we need to create a connector, the easiest way is to grab one of these diamond shapes that are on the left, right, top, and bottom. Don't confuse these with the squares on the corners. The squares on the corners will resize that bubble or that rectangle. But if we grab a diamond, we can drag it over here, and that gives us drop-off points on the other bubble. And now I created that with the wrong link. You'll notice I linked that from bread and it really should have been linked from Canada's food guide. Oh no. So to fix that I'm going to click on this connector and pick the diamond that's at its base and that allows me to reattach it to somewhere else. Now if I don't like the way this connector is hidden behind here I can grab the diamond for that end and move it to a more conspicuous and a neater place like that. And that's the basics of starting to create your, mo your concept map and in the next tutorial we're going to look at rearranging and organizing those ideas.